I feel there's a big part of me that was just focused on analysis. So, you know, analyzing other people's views, you know, breaking it down, trying to get more and more kind of granular, figure things out. But then I came to a point where I realized I had to synthesize things. Today's guest used his own personal development journey as inspiration for creating Inner Compass Academy to empower people to live from a place of alignment and integrity. Join us for a conversation with Jan Demerelp. Well, I have to mention, because I don't, I don't think you know this, but I connected with you completely randomly out of chance. I was, um, I believe I was looking at Webflow websites. Does that sound right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you popped up as as one of the, um, you know, you were like in the in a portfolio or something, and your website is just really well done. And I'm I'm a I'm a web nerd, so I saw that and I started reading through it, and I was like, whoa, this is really cool. And it immediately I was like, we have to see if we can get him to come have a conversation with us. So um, yeah, really appreciate you being here. Well, yeah, yeah. I- I, I always I'm curious to hear how people stumble across uh, me on the you know, on the vast internet. Um, so I, I'm humbled to hear that you you like my website and it and it does mean a lot because I, I'm someone who kind of prides myself in in not kind of being the ordinary in that I don't like just having a bog standard you know, Squarespace template. I wanted to do something quite creative. Um, yeah, so I, I appreciate I appreciate the uh, you know, the compliment. Yeah. And there was so much language on your website. So obviously I I have a lot of questions about what you do and and your community and how you got there. Um, But, you know, you have some language on your website that really resonated um, where, you know, it's just that it is unique in that you're you're not. Well, let me just go read it because I'm not going to be able to. So you say. uh, you won't find overpriced courses or fantastical promises of personal transformation. Instead, we commit to helping you navigate the emotional ups and downs of creating meaningful life changes. And I was like, wow, that's it. That's, we need more of that. (laughs) Yeah. So what, um, I guess to keep this question small, what got you to that point? How, how did you get here? Well, so it's a quite a long journey. Um, uh, I suppose I can I can start at the beginning uh, of how I kind of embarked on Inner Compass and and how it evolved over time. Uh, so, so back yeah. in 2020, I went through a really uh, kind of challenging period of my life. You know, I had a, a big um, a kind of traumatic event, a really big hit, um, and suddenly you know my life was put more into context you know i was working as a management consultant in london you know i had all the, all the boxes ticked from the outside um you know i i had um, you know, all the worldly things i could have wanted so you know, all the, all my money was spent on buying gifts for people because you know i i was getting a good salary i had a you know, decent house i had you know all the physical things um but you know i was you know, there's something that didn't feel right and i had you know, I was searching for um, kind of the answers to the bigger questions in life, um, and then this kind of this big uh, traumatic event happened. You know, I, my relationships broke down, and and I went through a kind of very difficult period. And then suddenly, I had this kind of this voice of clarity kind of come into my mind of like, oh, I I can't be here in London. You know, I, I need to move countries. Um, it's very very. It's difficult to describe. There's almost like a, it, like the five senses break down and kind of sixth sense, sense comes in. And I had this kind of intuitive hit that you know, London's not the place for me. I need to move. And this was in 2020. So COVID just struck. And I was, you know, I, I don't know where I got it from my mind, but I thought you know, I need to get to the Netherlands. You know, I want to move to the Netherlands and, and you know, leave London behind. Um, and you know, I had no idea how I'd do it, but that's like a very strong intention I set. And then it, one thing you know, happened after the next. My, my girlfriend was changing jobs at the time. She was looking at you know, a number of different companies in London. And uh, you know, she applied for a bunch of them, but got rejected. 
And then one job opened up uh, at Zoom, actually, uh, in Amsterdam, and she applies for it and, and gets the job. Um, so then just quite miraculously, we moved to the Netherlands, and you know, we, we begin a life there. And um, it, it got to a point where I was in the Netherlands, I was working remotely um, for my job still in the UK. And it was a quite strange situation because I didn't know what I would do next because um, I couldn't work there forever because of tax reasons. I couldn't find a similar job um, in the Netherlands because I didn't have a master's degree, which is required in Europe uh, for the kind of work I was doing. So I had a kind of very big kind of existential crisis looming where I, kind of, I followed my intuition. I knew I was kind of in the right place, but my rational mind was screaming at me and trying to make sense of the situation. And I found it very difficult to, uh, to, to navigate. So, so I began taking everything that was in my mind because I, I, I've been a student of personal development and self-growth for a very long time. And it's been something that's been very intriguing for me. Um, but I found my, my mind was being clogged up with it. Um, so I just had so many concepts and mental models floating about in my head. So, so I designed a system to organize my thoughts and to set goals and intentions um, so that I didn't have to have it cluttering my mind, I could organize it in one place. And um, this kind of master system I created is, was a notion template I called the life compass. And yeah, I, I used that and, and miraculously, as I kind of set these very clear intentions within there and I followed through with them, I was able to you know, create some really big shifts in my life. And I had uh, kind of in, intentions to you know, heal emotionally because I had gone through like such a big you know, uh, kind of emotional shock. and when I kind of set that clear intention and filtered out the noise from the internet and the kind of sound bites, uh, I was able to find really high quality resources and I was you know, curating them and keeping it in my own personal um, uh, uh, kind of life organization system. I don't know kind of a better word for it, but it's kind of a, a, like my second brain, the second brain has been talked about by the likes of Tiago Forte. Um, and uh, I found it was really helpful when I was navigating a really confusing period of my life to have something I could go back to. And it's my own personal sanctuary, which wasn't being corrupted by the noise of social media or it wasn't, I wasn't being targeted by, by ads. Uh, and then eventually I got to the point where I thought, well, this could potentially help someone else. Uh, so that's when I started building a business around the Life Compass. I initially started off as this um, as an online course to teach people how to create their own systems to organize their mind. And then it grew out of that and became quite different in the end. Um, but I'll pause there in case you have any questions. I, I do. I actually wonder, you said that you, um, before this, had, had already been interested in personal development. It was something that, you know, you, you'd already kind of looked at. And how did that begin? Where did you start with that? Well, I think the root of it, um, I think, it came in teenage years where I, I remember being in my bedroom. I was probably 15 or 16 at the time. And it, growing up, I was very intellectually um, inclined. So I, I was very academic. I valued my studies. I was very rational. I did mathematics at, sc at, um, at school and you know, the sciences. My, my left brain is very developed and you know, like very rational with problem solving. But I, I, I remember struggling to express emotions and I felt emotionally very repressed um, as, a, as a kid. And I remember one time as 15 year old me in the bedroom, just like getting so angry that I couldn't express emotions. I'm like, well, why, why can't I like feel you know, sadness or happiness? Or, um, you know, it felt like it was, I had this mask on and I, and I had this block w with emotions. Um, so that's kind of the, the first point where I felt that something wasn't quite right. And then nothing really came of it. But over, over time, I stumbled across you know, various uh, resources on YouTube. Um, and I, I kind of I went down the rabbit hole of you know, one thing leading to the next, where you know, I think I started looking at, you know, why don't I feel motivated? And then you start getting insights about motivation. And then I connect that to um, you know, various other things like you know, different aspects of philosophy or spirituality. Um, and... Um, yeah, I, I just went through and, and consumed as much content as I could. And I was very fascinated by it. Um, so that, that's how it kind of all began for me. Yeah. That's such a um, thing, being overwhelmed by all the personal development stuff out there. 
and just information in general. Mm. Um, so you, so you got overwhelmed with that. You, you were kind of full and, and cl cluttered. And then you went into, um, you basically stopped the, you turned off that tap mm. and, and then what, where, where'd you go from there? Uh, yeah, I remember actually I was, I was drawn to a video at one point, um, talking about the dangers of personal development and how we can actually overdo it. And for me, that was very, um, uh, threatening actually, because I'd almost used all this personal development content as a crutch, um, like using other people's mental models and views, um, to kind of, to hold up my worldviews and my beliefs. And then as soon as I stepped away from it, I had to confront the questions of you know, what do I really believe? You know, who, um, uh, you know, who am I um, you know, more, more, more deeply rather than kind of parroting other people? Uh, and, and that's kind of what started this journey of, of Inner Compass. And it, uh, you know, for quite some time, I've been a real kind of big fan of journaling. So I would keep a journal um, you know, most days. I, I had, a, I think, a streak of about 400 days in a row. I just journaled whatever was on my mind uh, that day. And I thought, wow, journaling is this really powerful tool to, uh, to bring order to all the information that's in your mind. Because um, I, I, I've kind of developed this idea of, of kind of analysis versus synth synthesis, you know, these two contrarian um, polarities where... I feel there's a big part of me that was just focused on analysis. So, you know, analyzing other people's views, breaking it down, trying to get more and more kind of granular, figure things out. But then it came to a point where I realized I had to synthesize things. And that synthesis happened when I stepped away from new ideas or, or, or kind of repeating ideas, but kind of phrased differently. And then I allowed my mind to kind of join the dots together. And that required me to, uh, um, you know, disconnect to just sometimes just do nothing, just go for very long walks. And then these connections would start forming in my brain. Uh, and then I would solidify that by, by journaling. And I felt this was really powerful. Uh, so that's how in a compass slowly, gradually shifted away from just being about this uh, template I created. And it started to focus more on journaling. And then in addition to journaling, um, there's an aspect of, kind of authentic connection. So at the end of journaling sessions that I run, uh, people in the group, we, um, we raise anything that came up during our journaling. And, and there's been some really you know, beautiful um, moments where people have been vulnerable with each other. And, and you can see that shifts have happened um, you know, in them. I really, I love what you just said. I've never heard it put in those terms, the analyze and synthesis. Um, as someone who's been involved one way or another in personal development for a really long time and been a coach for a long time, uh, yeah, I used to say there were um, transformation junkies, you know, mm. <laughs> like people who are always looking for the next thing without ever seeming to have gotten the thing they already did, right? Um, mm. And and yeah, they they can say all the right stuff and they've taken all the courses and read all the books, but it doesn't actually seem to have made any difference because mm. they they get it intellectually but there's something about they don't get it <laughs> you know they they haven't synthesized never i never thought about using that word that's fantastic they haven't synthesized it they haven't um had the experience of it if you will mm. and another word that i think i could use is that kind of the word embodiment. So is a kind of yes. difference between kind of intellectually mm. under, understanding something, but actually having lived it and experientially experientially embodied it. Um, yes. and, and that can be quite scary. So, um, you know, you know I, I really struggled being vulnerable in the past with other people, um, you know, throughout my, my childhood, you know, I was terrified of raising my hands at school. Um, I was, you know, very introverted, very shy. Um, and, you're showing any kind of vulnerability uh, uh, from my parents was kind of modeled as something which just wasn't done you know, in, in England sure. at least. Um, people aren't too emotional. You're kind of, you're more focusing on like the surface level conversations and um, you know, getting vulnerable with other people. Uh, yeah, it was really challenging for me. And uh, yeah, I remember the first time I saw a therapist, um, I think it's 2021. 
uh, it, it was such a barrier I had to go through mentally uh, to do that. Um, because this idea of letting someone else into my inner world, uh, it just seems so scary and so intimidating for me. Um, but then once I was able to do that, then it's like the floodgates released. And then suddenly I would have conversations with friends of mine. Um, and, and those conversations would shift and become so much deeper. And then we'd actually talk about, uh, kind of your personal issues you know, affecting myself. And, and then he would mirror back to me and say, actually, I've got all these, you know, my, my best friend from home I'd speak to. And you know, he'd say, oh, I've got all these challenges as well. And I, I resonate, you know, I'm also struggling you know, in this aspect of my relationships. And, and then suddenly I didn't feel quite as alone. Um, and that's ultimately what I've been trying to do with in a compass now is to form that kind of that connection with other people, um, and you know, help people synthesize and, and embody, um, you know, experiences through uh, authentic relating. Yeah. And looking at, at the website, uh, I was, that's the thing I was the struck that I was struck with the most is that it, you use the word community, which it seems like it is, but it, you also, uh, several times use the term safe space, you know, mm -hmm. so just creating a place where it's okay to be wherever you are. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, that's just fantastic, man. Um, how has that been? Has that been challenging to create that and hold that space or has it been not a big deal? Yeah. And is it just you or do you have other people that kind of help you hold that space? Um, well, it's just me who's put it together, but, um, my, my fiance, she, she uh, attends every week to my journaling session. So something you know, at the beginning, especially it was just so motivating having her, um, because you know, I, I would run these guided journaling sessions and just no one would show up. So it's just like me and me and my fiance on the call. And it, you know, if I didn't have her there, I'd probably have been demotivated and given up. But yeah, you know, she turned up, so I still went ahead and ran the the journaling course as, as scheduled. And um, it's funny, you know, I, I put my community on Eventbrite, um, if they're not really thinking much of it. And then just every week now, I get random people donating money, and they trickle in and they they join a journaling session. Um, so I, I get people who kind of come in on an ad hoc basis, uh, and then I have other people join um, who are who are regulars, and I see them almost every week. So I, I have. It, a wonderful couple who joins from Israel. I have someone who joins from America, someone who joins from England. Uh, so it, it's been so so nice to have a a, uh, a, a kind of a, a space where people can get together from all around the world. And it's been just such a joy to to see how it's evolved over the over the months and almost a year now. I've been I've been running it. Oh, that's really cool. Bill, we should we should put the box on Eventbrite. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it also uh, um, it also seems like you're not. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem like you're in this to have this be like your main career and make a bunch of money and scale it and do all that. Am I? Is that correct, or am I missing something? Well, and initially, I had the thought of this is going to be my my you know, the business is going to provide income i'm going to have um, kind of my, my livelihood from it but the, the more and more i started thinking about it and as i ventured into this I, I realized that i think the most successful um i suppose one way to put it is like these conscious communities where people come together and they feel space safe to open up you know, the majority of them i found were based um, either on donations or completely free um, so I was a bit hesitant to add a, a paywall behind it. Um, but in the future, I am going to try and monetize it in, in different ways. Um, so there's a section I'm working on within the community at the moment, which is focused on uh, curated resources, because you know, I've come across all kinds of resources on the web as I've um, uh, kind of gone, gone through my own personal development journey. And I've, I've fall down, fallen down pit hole, put pitfalls, and I've seen... Um, you know, very high quality resources, which just don't have much visibility at all, for instance. And I've, I've, I've kept them within my own kind of life compass, which is the area where I organized everything. And I'm thinking of creating this curated resources space, pointing to other people um, in this space who I think are of high integrity 
um, and would be a valuable resource for people. So that's going to be a kind of a monetized option. But for the most part, the, the community is donation based and um, and I and I don't see it making kind of you know, six figures, but yeah, you know, I've got other avenues in which I can make money. So uh, I'm yeah, you know, I'm comfortable with being that way. I love that. Yeah, it's um sounds like you're growing a really cool community. Do you have um well first of all, how long when did you start this? When did you make the change? Uh, or make the the jump, the leap into cr actually creating this thing? Um, I guess, was it a jump or was it this really easeful, you know, little piece by piece, building it together, putting it together as you saw people wanted to join? Like, what was that process like? Oh, it was, it was very messy, very messy, very inconsistent, um, very confusing. You know, I would, uh, so you know, I built the website in Webflow. So it means I've got kind of free reign of, of editing it. And, you know, I go crazy sometimes. It's like one uh, one week, I just like re-format re, re, uh, all the text on my website. I'm like, you know, I, I don't like this anymore. It's not resonating. You know, I, I want, you know, I don't think it's um, you know, encompassing what I want uh, it to be now. And I, you know, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, I've got kind of two personalities at one point where I was thinking like, okay, the website is going to be about this and Encompass is going to be about this. And um, and I kind of redo all the website. And then my my, my fiance comes to me and she's like, yeah, what have you done? You've completely rebranded this. Um, you're going to confuse people. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm and I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't sit right. And she's like, okay, you need to sleep on this or you know, wait a few weeks and then come back to it. Um, but yeah, very slowly, I would kind of redo it, um, see how it felt. Um, maybe some, some aspects would feel right, some wouldn't feel right. Uh, and I would kind of go that way. Um, there, there are periods where I also hit huge roadblocks where I just didn't know what I was doing. And uh, yeah, this was especially, especially challenging because I was doing it um, by myself uh, at home. So I lacked kind of input from other people around me. Um, and th there are periods where I just took breaks from, from building in a compass. So I would take a few months out. Um, I would do something completely different. So for instance, I, I got a job working in a bakery and I made cakes for three months. I just, I just oh, wanted to do something com completely different. And, and I was just really fed up of using my mind. I wanted to use my hands to do something instead. And I met some cool people doing that. Um, so yeah, my, my, my philosophy has been one of kind of following the flow and experimenting. And if I feel that there's some kind of excitement or aliveness in a kind of a new venture or a new area, then I, I tended to gravitate towards that and see where it led me without getting too attached to it. When did you actually open up the community for people to join? I believe it was May this year. Yeah, I think ah, April okay. or May. And so if you had to guess, and I know it probably varies, um, how many people do you feel like you have in it right now? Um, so I've got about, I, last I checked, I've got about 75 Um but awesome. the people there, they're, they're um, yeah, quite a few of them are regulars. So they come back every time. Um, but then also I have an option for people to to join my journaling sessions, but not join the community. So there's just a link in Eventbrite. So some people just join in, but then don't choose to be a part of the, the community, which is within Circle, this community right. platform. Oh, wow. Okay. That's awesome. Um, I have to ask, first of all, I relate so much and feel your pain when it comes to changing your website and changing your font and rewriting the copy and re totally rebranding next thing you know, <laughs> and spending way too much time and energy on it for no reason. <laughs> uh, I did that for years. My website has evolved so many times. I can't even count. And now I've learned that, you know, you do have to, to sleep on it before you make any hard changes. Um, so it looks, you, you said you built that site. I'm, I'm curious about that side of things like um do you build websites is that something you do on the side same with your illustrations your visuals are just uh really well done your instagram mm -hmm. visuals all that stuff is that you do you hire people what does that look like yeah so website wise um i i've got very little web design skills um so I've actually, this is version three of the website, the one that you're checking out. So I, I built one initially in, in Webflow and it was, um, 
it was more of an experimentation. So when I was building, I thought like, oh, this is going to be the one. But then I built it and it had um, lots of kind of flashy. Yeah, it was just kind of experimental. You know, it had kind of flashy elements to it. Um, it it wasn't very functional for a user, um, let's say. Uh, and then eventually I, I moved away and said, okay, I need to kill this and start again. So I did the second time around and then things improved. And I was happier, but not completely happy. And then I did it third time and then things started coming together. Um, but no, it, it was really uh, built from a place of experimentation. Uh, I, I'd never used Webflow before. I'd never made a website before, um, but I did do graphic design at school and I, and I, I do enjoy good d design. Um, I, I worked as a management consultant previously, so I would design kind of nice aesthetic looking PowerPoint slides for um, for uh, as, as part of my job for clients. So I did know good design principles and I, I had quite a bit of uh, time on my hands because I took a, a year's leave from work um, and you know, I, I poured a lot of energy into that website to make it unique and it kind of became an artistic expression for me. Um, and you know, it was a kind of a great joy to make it. So yeah, it was just through lots of iteration, perseverance and kind of learning as I, as I went. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I relate to a lot of that. And you, I, I was just poking around and it, yeah, so you use Circle. How has that been? Did you um, start with that or is that something new? It's the second choice actually. So I, I looked at something else initially, um, which is this gamified um, course creator. I think it's called Experienceify. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. I have heard of that actually, yes. So I, I tried that out initially and I did build the course, a course in there. Um, but you, I didn't like how it's so course centric. I, I, I realized that actually I want to say more community centric and then mm -hmm. courses as the byproduct. And that's one of the big shifts that I went, uh, I went through actually. And in that initially I thought my website was going to be there to sell courses. But then over time I realized that the real power is in the connection and the community rather than the course itself. And that's what caused me to shift towards circle. And, um, and yeah, that's when I started experimenting with it. So maybe April, I started playing around, seeing how the community might be structured. And then in May I opened it up and, um, it just had a very small number of spaces initially, but then mm -hmm. over time people trickled in, um, and now I think more and more people are coming, uh, and um, yeah, it's, it provides a good platform for people to engage and, and for content to be structured around. Yeah, we love Circle. We we've, we've been using that pretty much since the beginning, I think, uh, of the box, which is our little community, and um, yeah, it's the best. It's like Facebook groups, but without Facebook, and way better. <laughs> so community focus, like you said. Um, what are you also, doing now to uh, let people know about Inner Compass Academy? Um, well, I post a bit on Instagram. So that's one area. Um, also, I'm, I'm part of some other uh, online communities. Um, so one's focused on, uh, on various things. So it could be your breathwork communities. It could be a community on kind of authentic relating Um uh, so Intentional Society is one, which is really fantastic. I'm a kind of active member there. And I've made some great connections with people. And it's mainly through just, I suppose, quote unquote networking, but not. it's more just making friends with people online and they're saying, oh, hey, I've got this community. And they say, oh, that, that's really cool. Uh, and then they, they join and then they tell their friends about it. And then their friends tell their friends. Uh, so it's been more organic. Um, I think at some point I will put some money into advertising, but uh, from kind of not having worked for quite some time, my I, I, I burnt through all my savings. So now I'm back in <laughs> in, in kind of the corporate world uh, as a management consultant, doing it on kind of on a contractual basis. So I'm I'm padding my my bank accounts in the meantime, and then once I have a bit of a buffer again, I'll I'll think about uh, it, some maybe paid marketing to to raise some awareness around the compass. I did notice that at some point it looks like you offered mentorship or coaching. Um, 
and not right now, but what, what was that like? Did you actually do that or does it, is there that a placeholder on the <laughs> website? I did do it for a bit. Yeah. I, I did it with, um, with two people. Uh, it was, it was successful. Um, I, I was trying to figure out a way of, uh, doing mentorship, but maybe in a slightly different way. Um, uh, I wanted to build it around, um, kind of visual ideation, um, and and uh, as opposed to it being kind of just talking face to face, I wanted uh, to have some kind of visual reference point, which is why I ran the mentoring sessions in Miro, and I had these mm-hmm. kind of structures in there um, to help guide conversations and guide thought. Because uh, very often I'd read self development books, and those self development books would have exercises for people to do. And I actually caught myself never doing them. So I kind of like say, oh, yeah, that's a cool exercise. I mean, just flick through and read the next page. Uh, so then what I ended up doing is I went through all the self-development books on my shelf and picked out the exercises and structured them in a way and put them into a mirror space. Um, so I would take people through a kind of a coaching session by initially setting an intention. And then um, based on where they're at and what they need, I would have a kind of a template to choose from and I would have a kind of exercise I could guide them through. And I found that by having them visualize things um, in front of them, it allows for, I think, insights to form quicker as opposed to going around the same topic again and again. Uh, and I would often, as they're talking, I would type things up on post-its and then put them in orders and and say like, oh, yeah, how do you feel about this? You know, does that represent it well and you know, your situation? Um, and it would allow for you know, deeper investigations um, to occur. Uh, so yeah, that was something I experimented with. I um, At the time, I didn't market it to uh, a broad audience. So I only had two people doing it, but I had very positive uh, experiences. Um, and outside of mentorship within In a Compass, I ended up uh, doing youth mentorship. So I've, I mentored a 15-year-old kid and now I'm mentoring an 11-year-old kid um, because... Yeah, I, I kind of realize in myself that I'm still kind of learning to mentor people. So I didn't feel comfortable kind of going out there and and uh, getting a big group of people because uh, I wanted to kind of improve myself. And um, so that's why I'm starting small and um, yeah, and trying to improve as I as I go. Uh, I I applaud that wholeheartedly. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting and, and it. Maybe it goes back a little bit to that analysis versus synthesis. You can you can have all the techniques and the tools and the exercises, but the ability to uh, be with people, you know, like really be with them and hold space and uh, listen deeply, uh, mm-hmm. that comes from doing. You know, you can talk about it all you want, but if you don't uh, have the experience of doing it, it, it's probably not going to work very well. So that's fantastic. I love that you're exploring that. And uh, I think you're a very brave man for uh, mentoring kids because, you know, kids are scary <laughs> 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 or can be, you know what I mean? Um, but but they're also fantastic. And, and uh, I think we need more of it, you know? Yeah. And you know, just on with the kid I'm mentoring at the moment, you know, she's really wonderful. She's an 11 year old, but she's so self-aware. And mm. if I say something and she doesn't understand it, then she'll call me out on it. She's like, wait, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you know, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, what are you talking about? I and, you know, it. just, you know, sometimes there's a filter involved when you're speaking to adults, um, your kind of social etiquettes, but with, you know, with 11 year old, it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, um, it doesn't. <laughs> which, which I found so, so refreshing is, is really nice. Um, and it's a, it's a real learning experience for me as well, um, which and it's something which I, I've been getting lots of um, personal fulfillment from. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, I, you I know, lo- this I lo- is a, I have an off topic question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, what do you do as a management consultant? Um, so I specialize in, well, previously I specialized in data strategy, but I've okay. recently moved into cybersecurity. Um so I'm I'm currently working for a UK government department um, consulting on cyber strategy. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for clearing Seems that like up. Two, <laughs> two different brains. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. 
Yeah. Well, you said That's cool. that you had this really developed left brain, and it sounds like uh, you're able to like make money with that left brain and mm. and do you know good work. And in, I mean, look, that's important work. We need you know more of it. I actually read a read something about the the gap in how many cybersecurity jobs are needed mm. at this point, and it's overwhelming. There's mm. so there is so much that's needed in that area. So it's, I think it's super important work. Um, but yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't seem like it could be much further away from, uh, inner compass life design. Well, you say that, but actually it's crazy how, how many of the skills I've developed through inner compass and what I'm doing there are actually applicable. Um, because the role I'm doing at the moment is a kind of a high level you know, enterprise strategy one. And when you, whenever you talk about strategy, you, you talk about bringing people together. Um, you're there. Um, it, it's, it's quite political in nature. So you have like different teams. Mm -hmm. Each team has different agendas. Um, people have different viewpoints as to what should be done. Um, there is lots of kind of individual analysis, but not much synthesis. Kind of coming back to that theme of like analysis and synthesis. Um, so my my experience. So I've been in this role for about a month, and it's been. In, it's been really interesting because I've had the chance to speak to so many different people, maybe 20, 30 different people and get all their viewpoints and then synthesize that into um, these kind of higher level ideas. And then soon I'm going to be hosting a workshop um, to kind of bring these people together and um, allow for them to kind of share their ideas and, um, and kind of come to consensus. Uh, so, this element of kind of people relations, um, consensus building, uh, bringing people together, you know, all these things, which you know, have also kind of applied through my, through my work within a compass, um, and also kind of just rapport building through kind of mentorship as well. Yeah, it, it comes into play what I'm what I'm doing in my my current job. Oh, I love it. So. I'm curious, um, just if you don't mind sharing just kind of high level, the process or the framework that you've created with inner compass, like if I were to join, you know, what would you kind of help me walk through? Um, so I suppose there's a few paths you can take. So you can come as a, uh, as someone who's just interested in, uh, being part of a, uh, community focused on say introspection and personal development and you can join weekly journaling sessions and you can uh, journal as a group you know i lead these sessions every sunday i ask a kind of introspective you know heart-centered question um, which is different every week and people journal on that and then afterwards you set intentions for the week to come um, so you can come you can journal you can make it you can help uh, you can use it to build a journaling practice so if, if you um, you know the benefits of journaling or you you, you want to try journaling for yourself um, but you feel that doing it alone doesn't um, come easily to you then you can come do it as part of a community uh, so that's that's one kind of person who comes and joins uh, another person is someone who wants to connect a bit more deeply with other people online um, so once a month I do something called a community gathering and that's where uh People come for journaling, we journal together, and then we stay on afterwards for, let's say, 45 minutes or an hour. And we have a group discussion, or we go into breakout rooms and connect, depending how many people there are. Uh, and that gives people a chance to share what they've journaled about and go a bit deeper. And uh, that's a nice place to kind of have some authentic connecting. So if, if you're, you know, some people who join are quite isolated. So for instance, there's a a lovely lady who joins my community who's based in rural uh, England and she's by the coast in a cottage and there's no one around her. So she finds it really fulfilling to be part of that group and, and to connect with people. Uh, so that's one example of another person. And then when I was offering mentoring, you, know, you could have joined, um, you can take part in the kind of community aspects. And then also if you are in a bit of a uh, transitionary period in your life, where you're kind of asking questions as to where you should go next and you're kind of unsure of of uh of your your kind of upcoming upcoming path in say the next year uh 
then we can explore that together through the mentorship. And that's what the mentorship was designed to do. You know, as, as, uh, my intention was to be a, a sounding board and to hold space for people as they figured out what was feeling most um, authentic to them and most alive for them um, as they went through a kind of transitionary period. Have um, some of your community members also um, implemented the actual life compass uh, you know, tool that you created? Um, so this has been a bit challenging for me because uh, I, I've launched it, but I, I haven't been able to get people to adopt it. Uh, so no one's actually bought it yet. Um, but I also think that it's, there's a lot of nuance and complexity to do, to it. And my intention at some point uh, when I have more time outside of um, the, the, the consulting work I'm doing, I'd like to host um, these, uh, multi-week courses where we kind of come together and people can implement it together in their own life, as opposed to giving someone a template and saying, you know, good luck. You know, this is how right. <laughs> you, yeah. you apply this to your life. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about the fact that no one's bought it yet, but I'm happy it's there. I think a, mm. a lot of thought went into creating it. And I think at some point in the future, I'm going to pick it back up again and, and create something around it to help people to, um, to implement it into their own life and get value from it. I love that idea. I think that's the way to go for sure. I also, um, I'm really, uh, I, there's something I just found on your website and I, and you know, that's funny. I like doing this sometimes where you're talking to somebody, um, and we've done it before. Where I didn't have a whole lot of time to, uh, to look at things before we got on the session. And, and I just noticed that you have this, this wonderful thing where as people go through with you and complete their milestones, uh, you plant a tree. Yeah. Trees grow as you grow. That is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I love that. Uh, how many trees have you planted so far? Well, I've, since I've only mentored two people, I've, uh, planted about about six trees uh, but, hey, but the uh, but but the, in, the intention is there right it's uh, i you know, I, I was i think you're thinking of trying to do mentoring differently how can i how can i um mm. um yeah add aspects to mentoring which is a bit different from from what others are doing and i, I love this idea of um trees growing as you grow uh because i think it, from my experience at least personal development and self-growth can be very um internal and it's just about you but i also mm -hmm. wanted to make it about the planet as well um which is where that kind of idea sprung from i love it and you actually have me sitting here thinking you know what are all the places i could put that in <laughs> you know where we could make tree planting a uh, a benefit of all the things we're already doing i i just mm -hmm. i love it what a fantastic idea yeah. Yeah. I feel like you've really taken the time and, and haven't really rushed into it and forced things. Like you said, you really go with the flow. I love that you said you take breaks and you do things that you've like never done before, like the ba working at the bakery. That's awesome. Um, I feel like you really built the foundation here and the foundation really being like the community and the structure to hold the community and facilitate, um, and so I'm excited. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited to see what you build on top of that. Uh, you know, like you said, you're kind of almost taking a step back to, to build up the resources to then really do it. Um, and I'm really excited for you. It, it seems like you have everything you need. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. That, that the, the, uh, the word foundations is something that, that really resonates and that's something I had in mind. Um, Kind of this, it's actually funny. I was walking in the woods um, at the very beginning when I was creating in a compass and I saw a tree which had fallen over from the wind and it had its roots exposed. And I actually took a picture of it because that, that symbolism was so strong in my mind of, you know, be careful to, to, um, to have deep roots and strong foundations so not to fall over. And yeah, for some reason that image stuck with me. And as I was going through in a compass and if I had um, the desire or the urge to, kind of cut corners, um, then that kind of image popped back into my mind again uh, of, you know, making sure to you know, have solid foundations to grow from. And it all came back to trees. 
And it came back to trees, yes. <laughs> you know, Jen, we, we ask everybody a question that you kind of already answered. So I, I kind of want to ask it a different way. We ask all our guests, do you consider yourself more introverted or extroverted? And you said earlier that at least as a kid, you were very introverted, very shy. Um, you know, uh, it would seem to me that that's changed a little bit. Um, and maybe you have a little more uh, balance in that yeah. now, um, given how much interaction you have with other people. Hmm. Um, I wonder if that's the case, which you're shaking your head. So I, I feel like maybe that's accurate. Um, uh, what, what was that transition like that opening, that shifting to, to being more extroverted and how, uh, or, or at least more integrated between the two. And, and what do you think was the biggest catalyst for that? Oh, that, that's a deep question. I, um, I suppose there's different phases to this. There, there is a phase when I, I was, um, out of high school going to university or I suppose college in the US and that kind of forced me out of my myself and forced me to engage um, quite a bit with other people with um, with external groups with clubs and societies and that that gradually forced me out of my my shell a bit and then going into the work world I um, I was very conscious that I didn't want to be in a job just focused on, let's say, data analysis, which I could have done because I, I was very good at maths and and, and you know, and the data analysis side of things. Um, but I, I remember that was a decision point, which I I thought like you know, I could go into asset management or I could go into consulting. Um, so I I actually worked in the hedge fund for a year, and I felt it was a very uh, is it rewarding work in that it's is interesting intellectually, but also I felt I was losing my social skills because I, I wasn't using my voice much or communicating with other people. Um, so I had this choice in my mind, you, I, you know, what should I do as a career? And I, I consciously made an effort to pick something I was a bit uncomfortable with. So I was still uncomfortable speaking to people, um, but it offered me the most growth to go into consulting. And um, I was very fortunate. I landed an internship in a big consulting firm and that allowed me to uh, interact with clients, to work as a team with people, and that again helped me to get out of my shell. And then, um, one of the biggest things I would say. So after I left consulting, and then I was in the Netherlands uh, during the COVID years, I uh, I started uh, researching and and uh, becoming more familiar with kind of inner child work and connecting with kind of a younger aspect of myself. And I, I remember doing a guided hypnotherapy, which which had me reconnect with a young version of me. Um, so it had me visualize walking through a park and on the park bench, there's, you know, seven year old me or 10 year old me sitting there. And it was really fascinating because in this visualization, I saw my younger self looking really awkward and 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 um, yeah, he was all contracted. And and you know, I saw him as, as this kid who uh, you know, people didn't want to be friends with or. Uh, or a kid who um, you know, was too shy to speak up, and it was it was really healing. Then to, you know, through this med through this guided meditation, I, I went there and I sat next to him. I gave him a hug, and that's when I really started opening up and connecting with this younger aspect of myself, which I had uh, kind of hidden away and 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 disowned to a degree. And it's through that reintegration with my kind of younger self um, through these guided meditations and through journaling that I saw the biggest shift happen and that allowed me to move away from that kind of introverted aspect of me um, or at least allow myself to create more balance um, between you know, that side of me and the more extroverted side. Well, that was a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> I, I really love that the, one of the first things you sort of said was at some point it was a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a choice. Well, I could... I could do this, this work that has me not be around people, or I could actually be around people and, and grow in that area. Um, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm curious to ask, um, if there 
and you don't have to share, but just to kind of like, I like to look under the hood a little bit, you know, the inner game, Bill and I have been thinking and talking about that a lot. And I think that's a important part of this podcast is, you know, the voice that we all have. So I'm curious if you have a voice that, you know, there's things that a lot of people, you know, more creative people, especially will suffer from, you know, um, imposter syndrome. There's, you know, shiny object syndrome, procrastination, um, kind of like fear of putting yourself out there and selling your your work do you have any of that that's like you know stands above the rest um any patterns any voices that kind of try to keep you you know down um well i would say that i've been very lucky to have um not experienced the kind of negative voices which i hear other people battle um, for some reason, I had an inordinate amount of confidence uh, at school and at university when it comes to uh, kind of academia. And I think it probably came from my my mum, uh, who was a teacher, and she would always you know, talk about the importance of of being intelligent and uh, and you know, reading and learning and and uh, doing well at school. So I had this you know, this crazy amount of self confidence when it came to intellect. Um, but then it, it got to a point where that started breaking down. Um, down for me and one of the biggest challenges that I face is that moment when I uh, you know, I, I realized that I can't I suppose intellectualize everything and understand everything rationally uh, and that was a real hit for me and then that was around the time where I left consulting and started doing in a compass and that's when all the doubts started coming flood, you know, flooding in um, so up until that point I you know, I, I had everything kind of nicely figured out in my mental model. You know, I'd done, I, I'd done the traditional path well. I got good grades. I went to a good firm. I was earning money. But then as soon as that was stripped away, then all the doubts came in. And I, I realized, that, oh, actually, it's pretty scary. You know, if, if I didn't have, you know, I, I wasn't guaranteed that I'd go back to consulting. And I was in a pretty difficult place when I was burnt out. So that was when I was most vulnerable. And I, I had... Uh, a lot of these limiting beliefs coming in of actually, you know, can I, can I mentor people? You know, who am I to, to be a mentor for other people? Um, you know, can I do consulting work now? Cause now I just felt no passion for it. And um, you know, what, what am I to do? So there was definitely a big battle. Um, I, fe I feel what helped with, for me was uh, surrounding myself with people who would bring me up as well as content that would lift me up as opposed to kind of focusing on what's wrong, focusing on, um, on uh, the the positive aspects uh, of of kind of the entrepreneur's journey, whilst also being honest and truthful about the hardship. So as opposed to kind of a toxic positivity that sometimes you see, where everything you know, is going to be great. Um, you know, I I, I I got drew to drawn to people who are kind of high integrity, who are authentic, and um, I found that by surrounding myself with people who were smarter than me or more more uh, um, accomplished than me in a certain area that I wanted to grow into. That's what helped me to, to help to pull me up. Um, so, yeah, no, I I, I had a you know, big uh, period where I, I did have a lot of doubts, especially when I was making making the jump. Um, but at the same time, I, I would often come back to my kind of inner sense of... Um, motivation my my connect almost to that kind of that that um higher self i don't know how to say it but you know kind of in a in a voice of wisdom where you kind of drown out the, the noise from outside um i go walk in nature go into the forest um and then nice. my mind would settle and i'd feel a lot calmer um yeah so quite a long answer uh, apologies but that's kind of my journey when it's come to come to self-doubt and kind of inner inner critics and and the voices that's perfect um all right so i know that you are uh you're padding your bank accounts you're doing management consulting um as you begin to get to the point where you can put more energy back into inner compass hmm. what should we look for next um so Two things I mentioned during the uh, during our, our chat. Uh, so one is I'm looking to build out a curated resources area. Um, so this is 
become quite a big project because there's so, so many resources. I've got hundreds of resources. I'm going through and curating them and I'm trying to find ones which I think would be very valuable for people. So that's going to be um, a section within my community and uh, you can go there and be directed to you know, high quality content across the web. Um, again, it's kind of coming back to this theme of I want to help people to filter out the noise out there because the internet's very noisy now, especially uh, you know, with AI gen generated blog articles and just so much you know, content um, flooding the internet. Uh, I'm worried that high quality content is getting lost or getting drowned out. So that's one project which I have and um, I'm excited about. And then the second one is building a course around the life compass to actually guide people through setting it up and, and implementing it within their own lives. Fantastic. Awesome. Jan, thank you. This was a, just a fantastic conversation. I, I love what you're up to. It's, it's so great. And I cannot wait to see what happens next. Well, yes, thank you. It's, it's been a been a joy connecting, and and actually, this is my first official podcast uh, that I've been on. So, you know, thank you, Miles, for reaching out, and it's been such a such a lovely experience. Oh um, well, I'm awesome. I'm happy to be your first. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> awesome, Jen. Thanks for coming on, and uh, excited to see um, the next version of In a Compass. Thank you. Thank you.